Welcome to ATEC Training's Quick Start Video Series. Today we're going to be featuring the Model 1810 Electricity Trainer. It's a very unique trainer. It's a state-of-the-art computer-controlled or standalone unit. So we're going to go ahead and go over the basic features. So get out your operations manual, get your 1810 trainer ready, and let's get started. You're going to want to go ahead and open your operations manual up to pages 6 and 7. On page six, you're going to find information about configuration option one, setting up your 1810 utilizing laptops and the classroom management program. You want to check out the previous video in this series for information about option one. For this video, we're going to focus on configuration option two, which is where you'll be utilizing the 1810 trainer along with the keypad, and then you can have the trainers ethernet together through a hub port and operated by the instructor computer as well to log in all the answers. You can also use uh, configuration option two without the ethernet system. We're just using the board and the keypad and the written courseware that goes along with it. So let's switch over and let's check out and see what the 1810 board looks like. Once you've selected your appropriate configuration, you're ready to start looking at the parts and pieces on the trainer board. Starting on the left in the middle, you'll notice we've got our battery with our terminals for our positive and negative side, along with a resettable circuit breaker. We have a momentary switch right here. We have a full battery of resistors, including two 120 ohm resistors. Here in the center, you'll see featured a relay, followed over here to the left by a rotary switch. Down here on the bottom, we have four different light bulbs and each, are, there's two light bulbs of one resistance and two light bulbs of a separate resistance value. So that way you can run uh, different series and parallel circuit training activities. We have a uh, multi-pole switch here, followed by a little horn. We have a DC motor and another momentary switch that can, you can bring your circuits to ground. So this makes up all the parts and pieces. Now let's get a look at what you need to get everything plugged in. Now that you've had a brief overview of all the parts and pieces on the 1810 trainer, let's talk about getting it wired up so that way you can continue forward with your training exercises. Uh, the first step is going to be to plug in your 120 volt outlet. So we we'll provide one of these, you're gonna plug that into the wall and then the back of it plugs right into the center of the trainer. The other thing you're gonna to need to plug in is your provided CAT5 cable. It's gonna run from the back of the trainer and it is labeled on the back where it needs to plug in and plug it directly into your keypad unit as shown here. Um, and then if you're going to be utilizing the CMP software, you can go ahead and put your other ethernet cable in right here. And then that's gonna go ahead and allow you to have connectivity uh, with the CMP software. Uh, for demonstration purposes today, we're not gonna hook up to CMP. We're just gonna use the standalone keypad so that way you can see and show your students how to enter information. And with that being said, let's get a closer look at our keypad operations. Now that you have everything wired up, let's go ahead and power our unit on by utilizing the toggle switch on the back side. That's your master power switch. If your unit is connected up to the CMP system, the trainer will automatically connect with the CMP master computer and then it will prompt you to enter a student ID number. If it's not connected, as you pictured here, you'll see it'll jump right into standalone mode and then you're gonna be asked to enter a circuit number. So when your students are utilizing the 1810 trainer without the computer-based instruction, you will be using uh, provided courseware that's gonna walk the students through certain activities. And at the end of that activity, it will prompt them with a circuit number to input. So for today, we're just gonna punch in circuit one. And then to move forward, you always hit the pound key. And then from here, you're gonna get several different modes of operation. Uh, mode number one is troubleshooting. Uh, mode number two is for testing, and mode number three is for instructor only. Uh, detailed uh, instructions for all these different modes of operation are available in the operations manual provided with this trainer. Uh, for today's video, we're just going to look over troubleshooting. So we're going to go ahead and press number one, and then pound. And then that's going to go ahead and insert our fault. So we've got our circuit number in there, and when we're in troubleshooting mode, the keypad itself is going to insert faults in randomly, and there's anywhere from two to six faults per circuit, and it will just randomly insert those faults. So uh, once this happens, then the student will be able to diagnose 
on the board itself where the circuit failure happened, and then they'll be able to put their answer in right here for you. So it's going to ask you the fault is in what component number, and if you'll notice each of our components do have a little number, so that way you can identify. So let's say if this bulb right here, number 15, we just punch in component 15 because we think that's where the problem is. We press pound, and it's going to ask us for the type of fault, and then we have the option to insert open, short to ground, high resistance, short to voltage, or no fault. So for this one, we're going to say we think that the bulb is open, so we're going to press that in there, and then it's going to let us know that we got an incorrect answer. Uh, when you are in troubleshoot mode, it will tell you that the fault at compo with, with what component number the fault was at and what was actually wrong with it. And then you can press any key to move on to uh, a new fault. I'm just probably pressing one there. And then that's going to go ahead and continue this on over. Um, so your students will be able to go through each fault that's assigned to the student activity, which is in the courseware um, provided. And you could print that off or provide that through your LMS and PDF format or as a Word document. We're going to make all those uh, files available for you when you purchase this equipment. So now we know how the keypad works. Let's set up a circuit and see what the faults look like. We're going to take just a second to demonstrate the faulting capabilities of our 1810 trainer. Pictured up here, I have a very basic, we'll call this a brake light circuit. When I hit the brake light switch up top, that makes both my left and right brake light bulbs come on. And if you notice here, checking source voltage, 12.66 volts. It's always the first step, electrical diagnosis. I'm going to slide my keypad in here. I've got my fault set up. We're going to insert in fault six, press that pound key. That's going to go ahead and get that fault inserted for us. It says fault inserted. And then now when I press my button up here, we're going to notice, uh oh, something has immediately happened with the circuit. Now my left side brake light no longer works. So let's see if we can do some quick diagnosis to see um, <clears throat> what we've got going on. And then when I used to teach my students, first thing I say is, you know, analyze the circuit visually. So we know that this entire branch here appears to be working okay. So I don't really need to check for source voltage right here because I know I have it because this light bulb is working just fine. If we want to verify that though, we can go right there. I've got 12.8 volts when the switch is closed. There it is. Show it one more time. 12.18. So now let's take a look over here and let's see how much we're getting out of this to this bulb. Well, I'm getting the same source voltage right here. So that's a good sign. That tells me that the integrity of this wire is okay. Let's look on the ground side and see what I have there. I've got about 0.13 volts left on the ground side. So that's actually pretty good. Um, Pierce, we're dropping a lot of voltage there. Let's see if there's something wrong with this bulb itself. So I'm going to just disconnect my circuit here. I'm going to isolate it out so that way I can take a quick resistance measurement. Make sure I change my meter over to resistance. I'm going to pull this lead out here. I'll put our positive lead on the top side of the light bulb. Negative lead down here on the bottom side of the light bulb. Let's see how much resistance we have here. Oh, I got 125 ohms of resistance across that light bulb. So I feel like we're pretty much on track here to say that there's high resistance in this connector for this light bulb. So let me plug this back in real quick. We'll check one more time to make sure, yep, that's still not working there. All right, so now we're going to put our answer into our keypad here. It's going to say fault is in what component? Looks like we're in component 12. I'm going to press the pound key. And then what type of fault? I found high resistance there in component 12. I'm going to press 3 in there. And then it says answer recorded and form instructor. So I had to set this thing up in test mode. And if you were utilizing this to challenge your students, at this point they would raise their hand and have their instructor come over where he'll, he will input a key code in there and that will tell the instructor what the student answered and whether that answer was right or wrong for the circuit and the fault that was entered previously. So now that you had a chance to check out how the faulting system works, we're going to go back off our overhead here and wrap this video up. Thanks again for watching today's quick start video on the model 1810 electricity trainer for configuration number two, where we're utilizing the keypad instead of the laptop with computer-based instruction. If you've enjoyed today's video and would like more training, you can always come here to ATEC Training in Walton, Kentucky. Just go to our website, atechtraining.com, click on the link at the top that says training and see our future dates. Please be sure to also check out our other social media pages on Facebook and LinkedIn, and we'll catch you next time.